American country of Rwanda is marking a somber anniversary this month. 20 years ago, a horrific genocide fueled by ethnic hatred killed nearly one million people. There were, however, survivors, many of whom fled to the United States. And tonight, WSBT's Ted Land introduces us to a resilient group of Rwandans who live in our community and want to share their stories. Ted? They are incredible stories of survival. Some of them lost entire families back in April 1994. Dozens of relatives murdered. Their loss and what they witnessed is impossible for us to comprehend. But what's most remarkable is that they were able to rebuild their lives, and now they call Michiana home. There are survivors among us, living almost invisibly, in places like Berrien Springs, Mishawaka, and South Bend, witnesses to horror. My father and my sister were killed in the genocide. Marie Rose Semahungu of Granger was attending school in Europe 20 years ago when she learned her family, including her twin sister, had been murdered. It's, it's, it's all I can look at. I, I, I can't see them anymore. I can never talk to them again. And uh, I, just, I, just, I, ju I just look at them and uh, try to remember the, I, I, the, their voices. The pictures, all she has left of lives that were extinguished so brutally. I'm very blessed. That I know if I was there, I was going to be killed. No question about that. It was April 1994 when Rwanda's Hutu extremists started murdering the Tutsi minority population, who they blamed for many of the country's social and economic problems. The killing was swift and for many, inescapable. I was just waiting for death at this time. I was confined in a small room where every minute that passed, I expected to lose my, my life. My older sister was killed. Um, my brother-in-law, my niece, my two nephews, my uncle, and many, many cousins. I, I got shot here, so the bullet went through my arm and came out. I was the luckiest that day. I was left for dead uh, in a pool of blood of my family. Everyone else got shot in the head. So. Yeah, that, that's the scar that you can see here. It took Jean-Claude Mugenzi of Niles years to recover from the scars of genocide. This anniversary, a reminder of how far he's come. Yeah, well, life had no meaning at all back then. Uh, but as time goes by, you manage to put pieces together and try to move forward. Uh, so that is what 20 years has done. They first came to Michiana because it was where they knew people. A few Rwandans were already here for school. Others quickly followed. South Bend is a great community. We have so many friends who really embraced us. And that's another thing that really gives us hope and, you know, strength to continue to move on, to live a life with dignity. Though history brought them here, they refuse to live in the darkness of the past. Today, we are committed to bring light to, to our lives. We are committed to hope for a bright future. On Saturday afternoon at Notre Dame, there will be a ceremony to mark the 20th anniversary of the genocide. It was organized by some of the people you saw in the story, and they want to invite everyone in our community to attend and share this important anniversary with them. I've posted some information about that event on the web version of this story at WSBT.com. It's really striking how they're able to talk so clearly yes. about what they experience. They really want to share that and explain it to people in clear terms that we can't really understand, but mm -mm. it does help bring some perspective. It does, and thanks to them for sharing their yes. story because it's hard to understand We're very grateful for what that. they've lived through, what they've survived. Absolutely. Ted, Ted thanks. thanks.